Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and these are the 15 books that I have read so far in February. So yes, this is my February mid-month wrap-up. I ended up reading 15 books in the first half of February. Today is February 13th and I've read 15 books, which is crazy. I think I'm trying to <laughs> be distracted from my depression. <laughs> by reading as many books as possible. So that's what happened today. Um, I also tried to cure my depression by rereading some of my favorites. So that's what we're gonna talk about some of them in a minute. So without further ado, let's just get into these books. So last month I was introduced to the Big Boys series by Cassie Mint. They are contemporary uh, novellas dealing with bigger heroes. They don't connect at all. The only thing that makes them similar is like the heroes in these books or novellas are bigger in stature. Um, so I decided to pick up Big Baker. So this is the romance between Zoe and Javier. Javier is a very popular baker in this town that they live in and specifically in the hotel. Many people go to this hotel because Javier works there and bakes a bunch of amazing goodies. Zoe is one of the housemaids in the hotel and she secretly does these amazing anonymous spray paints throughout the city and everyone's trying to figure out who it is and no one knows that it's Zoe. And so Zoe has tried one of Javier's treats and it's like he is literally a god in baking form and chef form and so she decides she wants to thank him for all that he does by painting a mural right outside his building that is beautiful and filled with pastries and baking stuff and all that jazz and so when Javier sees it he's like oh my gosh this is beautiful I need to find who did this and he makes his life mission to find this person and he may figure out that it is Zoe and then he starts to become infatuated with her even though she doesn't know that he knows that she's the painter and all that stuff. The baking part in here was delicious. I was so hungry while <laughs> reading this and um, I just loved their romance and I love this big soft baker hero completely swooning for this heroine. It was so cute. My only little gripe is that the heroine claims that she knows absolutely nothing about men and that specific department, you know? Yeah, but then once they start getting hot and heavy, she essentially knows everything. Like, mm, <laughs> that's just my own little gripe about it um, because it didn't seem 100% realistic to me. If you don't know a lot about that stuff, shouldn't you be asking questions and having the hero take the lead and maybe being a little cautious, like, but that's just my thoughts, honestly. Okay, so the tropes in here is that there is an artistic character, the heroine is, uh, there's baking involved, a bigger hero, a cinnamon roll hero, it's a foodie romance, there's a hidden identity, it's on Kindle Unlimited, it's a workplace romance, and it is a novella. I ended up giving this book a four to five stars. Next is another Ice Planet Barbarian reread. If you didn't know, I've been starting to reread the series, like listening to them while I fall asleep. I've listened to these books many times, but um, we have another change of rating for you. We have Barbarian's Prize by Ruby Dixon. This is book number six. I changed my rating. Originally, I didn't love this one as much as other people were. I gave it three stars my uh, first time reading it. And um, I decided to bump up my rating a star. This is the romance between Tiffany and Saluk. If you didn't know, this is an alien romance series, by the way. If you don't know about Ice Play Barbarians, Google it. <laughs> I talk about it so much. This is like the first like friends to lovers on the planet and are part of the series and um, originally gave it three stars but then it like bumped it up for me. I think just because I have found a new appreciation for friends to lovers romances it's like my, one of my new favorite tropes of all time whereas when I first read this many years ago it really wasn't and so I just loved this the second time around and yeah essentially Tiffany was sexually assaulted while she was on the evil alien spaceship and so she wants Luke to help her be more comfortable around men or their alien species equivalent to men <laughs> and so he kind of gives her lessons even though he is very innocent <laughs> he just wants to help Tiffany. The tropes in this one is obviously it's an alien romance there's a damaged heroine, it's faded mates, friends to lovers, the hero falls first, it's on Kindle Unlimited, there are love lessons. <laughs> this book involves a lot of PTSD, so please be aware this that's a trigger warning, especially also the sexual assault part is a trigger warning too. Um, and we have an innocent hero. <laughs> so yeah, I really enjoyed this and I gave it a four to five stars. I then read another big boy romance. We have Big Bratfa, Bratfa? Brat I never know how to say that name. Big Bratva. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, this is another big boy romance, obviously. So this one is about Madison and Isla. Isla. 
I was the hero and he left the brat for life. I believe this book takes place in Russia. Anyway, he leaves the brat for life because he figures out it's not for him, but his brother is still heavily invested in life, in the mafia life. Um, and so his brother comes knocking on his doorstep one day and he has this blindfolded and gagged young woman with him and brings him into the apartment and is like, I need help. I kidnap this girl because her dad is very wealthy in America and um, I want her as ransom. Like I want to get paid for bringing her back to her father. Whenever Isla first sees Madison, he is utterly besotted by her. So he just wants to keep her safe. Like she just, he does not want his brother to touch her anymore. So he's like, I will keep her. I'll make sure she doesn't go anywhere. I will keep her with me. You could do what you want to do. Even though he does not approve of what his brother is doing and he tries to make his house and Madison living there as accommodating as possible to her um, because he just wants to be kind and nice and he doesn't know how to get Madison out of the situation without bad people coming for them both. And so the story is about the two of them falling for each other while he is keeping her in his apartment and then them realizing that they need to get out of this life and get away from these people. This was just a fun insta love novella. Um, I really enjoyed it. There's nothing too much to it so I gave it a four to five stars. There is a trigger warning here for kidnapping because the hero's brother kidnaps the heroine. The tropes in here, there's a bigger hero. It's insta love. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a mafia romance. There's a possessive hero and it is a novella. Next I read a doozy of a book um, and probably one of my favorite books of the year. However, it is not a romance book. So I read What Doesn't Kill You by Tessa Miller. This book is a doozy, <laughs> like I just said. Um, so because of what I've been going through recently, I've been trying to find more books that deal with disability and specifically chronic illness discussion and representation. And so I've been widening, widening my horizons and reading books with chronic illness that don't necessarily involve romance in them. This book I think is perfect for that. If you have a chronic illness of any kind, if you have a loved one that has a chronic illness, or if you want to learn about the chronic illness community and be more empathetic, read this book. This is a nonfiction memoir about Tessa Miller and her life with Crohn's disease. Um, but it flip flops back and forth with her own personal experience with Crohn's disease and then the general information and feelings and things that people with anyone with a chronic illness goes through in life. Like um, it, there's one chapter about um, how to find the right doctor. There's one chapter about just people from her support group, her, her um, chronic illness support group talking about what makes them happy and how they find joy in their lives, even though they suffer with these illnesses. And so she has just so many things going on. She talks about her own experience and she almost literally dies from a chronic illness and it is terrifying. So please be aware of the trigger warnings. I will uh, try to list them out. From what I remember, the trigger warnings are drug use, alcoholism, death of a loved one, sexual assault, near death from a chronic illness, COVID-19 and discussion of suicide. And obviously just discussion of chronic illnesses in general. If you're triggered by chronic illness discussion, I don't know if this book would be for you. Sometimes I am triggered by it. But more of the times I wanna read books that discuss chronic illnesses because I wanna see myself in something. And I have not seen myself so apparent in a book in my whole life. Like this is the embodiment of what someone with a chronic illness has to deal with. I don't have Tessa's exact experiences. Obviously, I don't have Crohn's disease. I do have celiac disease and POTS. Just her feelings and her discussion about people with chronic illnesses and what they have to go through. I thought this was just beautiful and I've never felt more seen, honestly. So yeah, if you wanna become more educated on chronic illnesses, read this book. The audiobook is amazing. The um, author herself narrates this book. I do wanna get a physical copy for my collection and just like, tab it all up and highlight it up and just copy and paste all the quotes that I love in here. I think this book is a masterpiece um, and I loved it. Please read it. I of course gave this book a five out of five stars. Next is another five star read and you might not believe me, but it is. I had so much fun reading this, okay? This is The Orcs Bride by Layla, Lila, Lila Fay. <laughs> I loved this. <laughs> this isn't like a masterpiece of like amazing literature and all that stuff, but like, this was so fun. I was sucked into it 
could not put it down. And it was fun. It was entertaining. I gave it five stars. I didn't see any inherent fault with it. So yeah, this is a monster orc romance and this takes place in like a fantasy-esque land. So it's not our land, but there are humans in it. So this is about Una, who is our human woman in this situation. And she is one of the many human servers that serves and is a slave to the orc population. Humans in this land are inferior to orcs and orcs kind of use and abuse them to their own means. The previous group of orcs that ruled over their land were very abusive and were the reasons why her family is all dead except for her and so she hates orcs however at the beginning of this book there is a war going on and this other group of orcs takes over the orcs that were on her land they now have to serve these new orcs and the leader and the general of these new orcs um his name is ergen he sees una and is like "Ooh, i like her She's feisty. She doesn't put up with the orc people in general. Like, like she tries to be as brave as possible around them. But in the back of her mind, she is making up a plot to destroy all orcs, honestly. Ergen needs a bride immediately because the ruler of all of the orcs is trying to set him up in an arranged marriage with his daughter and he despises her. So he's like, no, I don't want to marry that woman. So I need to find a bride of my own before I have to go back to the city that the ruler lives in. And so he sees Una and is like, ooh, I like her. And so he comes up to her and is like, hey, I'm gonna court you and you're gonna come to this city with me and we're gonna get married. She's like, I don't know. I don't know about that. And he's like, I'm gonna take you to the city with me and we're gonna be in the palace. And you're just gonna, you're just gonna marry me. It's gonna happen. And then she thinks about it. And she's like, if I go with him, I get to be in the palace and I could possibly kill the ruler who that is her main goal because she despises orcs and so she's, she agrees reluctantly and so this is about their journey going to the city and Ergen trying to woo Una even though he doesn't know a lot about human females and uh Una trying to resist him even though she probably can't <laughs> this was just so entertaining this was fun oh my gosh I loved this I am actually uh like one chapter into book two I think all three books in this series center around the same couple. So like this book kind of ends on a cliffhanger. Um, like there's just a continuation to their story in book two. I loved all the tension and the angst between the two of them. And oh my gosh. And he's like big. And so there's that aspect in here that I just love in monster romances. <laughs> I just loved this. And so I can't wait to read book two or like read more of it. Trigger warning in here for animal death and killing and a lot of blood. Um, tropes in here, there's a bigger hero, it's a fantasy romance, there's a height difference, the hero falls first, it's on Kindle Unlimited, it's a monster romance, it deals with orcs, and there is a road trip. I only like road trip books when it's at fantasy books, so yeah. Um, I really like this one, and I really recommend it if you love monster romances. <laughs> we have another IPB reread, I reread Barbarian's Taming. This one is about Maddie and Hassan, right? Yes, Maddie and Hassan gave this one four stars. Both of them are kind of like outcasts of their own. Hassan has no immediate family anymore. All of them died. And so he's kind of like on his own and he is uh, outcast from his tribe because of something he did in the previous book. He gets outcasted by his tribe. And then Maddie is kind of the loner human woman in the tribe because she's the only unmated woman and she kind of has a temper. So yeah, I gave this four stars. It's an alien romance. And this one has plus size rep in it too. And I love Hassan's thoughts when like you get in his perspective and how attractive he thinks maddie is oh this is also kind of like a friends with benefits situation that grows into something more then i read a little very short 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 novella i read a hathaway wedding by lisa claypas this is a little novella a part of the hathaway series so you read this book after book two seduce me at sunrise and this is just a how many pages is it 28 page pdf novella you can literally just google a hathaway wedding and it's online for everybody to see like it's not pirated or, pirated or anything like lisa claypas just put it online for people to read for free um but it's, yeah it's 28 pages and it's just the wedding between kev and um win and there's a bunch of antics and hilarity that goes on and i just found this to be really cute so i gave it a four out of five stars okay so the next three books i have to talk about together <laughs> so 
Um, I read three books by Stephanie Meyer that were all Twilight in different forms. I really wanted to reread Twilight just because it's a comfort read for me. I, I grew up reading it. This book is one of the reasons why I fell in love with the romance genre. I realized I had never tandem read any of her books, which means that you read the books at the same time. So for example, I really wanted to read Twilight and Midnight Sun together. And so what I was planning on doing is just flipping back and forth, read one chapter of Twilight and then read one chapter of Midnight Sun because Midnight Sun is the Twilight version in Edward's perspective. So I was planning on flipping back and forth between each chapter just so I could get the perspective of both characters. Like I feel like it should just been combined into one book, honestly. Um, but then I was like, you know what? I also want to reread Life and Death. And so I tandem read that too. <laughs> and so Life and Death is twilight but gender flopped so everybody in the book twilight except for renee and charlie for some reason and phil <laughs> uh, are all gender bent so in life and death it's not bella swan it's beaufort swan and then it's not edward cullen it's edith cullen and so there are some changes that stephanie meyer had to put in life and death because of the gender difference as well as um she just wanted to make it a different story than twilight and so some of the aspects of this book are different than twilight and so it's really interesting to read about to read this book in the same at the same time as twilight so i could really pick out those differences um so yeah i tandem read all three of these books i would read one chapter of twilight and then i'd read one chapter of midnight sun or it would be more than one chapter because Edward's book is longer than the regular Twilight because Edward never sleeps and so there's never really any breaks. It's just a continuous stream of consciousness for Edward, honestly. I'd catch up to Twilight in Edward's perspective in Midnight Sun and then I'd read that chapter of uh, Life and Death and then I'd start all over again. And this was honestly just a fun time. I listened to all three of these, by the way. Um, I would listen to the chapters, not physically read them. And this was fun. I recommend it. I don't know if I recommend reading all three at the same time because that may be very confusing to some people, but I was in for it. I was in for it. I really wanted to do it. So yeah, I had so much fun tandem reading all three of these books. They are comfort reads for me. So whenever I'm feeling down and I need to pick me up and I need to feel better about myself, I will just read these books. Then I decided to read a historical romance. I picked up Duchess of My Heart by Maya Banks. This is the first historical romance series by Maya Banks that I've read that is not a Highlander romance. So this is the romance between Jillian and Justin. So Jillian was married to this very abusive man. He would sexually assault her constantly. He would beat her, abuse her and even let other men do those things to her. It is grotesque, it is disgusting. So at the beginning of this book, she finds out that her abusive husband is dead and she is overjoyed. And so she decides not to hide the fact that she hated her husband. She does not go into mourning. She does not wear any black clothes. She goes into society with these revealing, beautiful, vibrant dresses and society is just like, what are you doing? Like they're very scandalized by her. She also makes it very apparent at public knowledge that she is very close to her friend Case, who is a man. And back in olden days on that time, women couldn't really be very close friends with a man or it could cause scandal. Case's older brother, Justin, here's, here's wind of this. He is the Duke. Um, he hears wind of Jillian and Case's friendship and it's like, I'm not going to let this woman ruin my brother's life. He decides to go confront her and to break off the relationship by any means possible. However, when he first meets Jillian, he is utterly intrigued by her, even though he can't stand that he is intrigued by her. <laughs> Jillian is having a really hard time because she doesn't want to marry ever again because she doesn't want to be under the thumb of a man ever again because of what her husband did to her. Justin tries to show her how he is nothing like her husband. This was a solid historical romance for me. I gave this four stars. I think I honestly just prefer her Highlander books because her Highlander books are just perfect. Like they're so much fun. I found that this one to kind of be lackluster compared to her Highlander ones. I love in here the friendship between Jillian and Case. Um, you don't see a lot of male female friendships in romance books that don't develop into a romance, you know? Um, and so I just love the platonic friendship that you can see between a man and a woman in this book. I of course also love the, the love that blossomed between Jillian and Justin. It was very beautiful to read about. I just, it was not a full five stars because I know that I love other Maya Banks books more than this. <laughs> so yeah, you're going here for beating, abuse, sexual assault. 
Um, tropes in here, you have best friends, sibling. There's a caretaking scene, a damaged heroine, emotional romance, hate to love, and it is a historical romance. But then I read a disappointing book. I have been wanting to get into Katie Roberts' backlist because she's one of my favorite authors. However, um, I haven't read any of her previous first works. And so I decided to pick up her first published book, which is Wrong Bed, Right Guy. And I wish I did pick it up. I'm so sad to say that, but this was not it. This was not it. So Elle works at this art gallery and she has a huge crush on the owner of the art gallery. And so she decides to be brave. And one night she goes into his studio apartment above the gallery and almost nothing. Oh no, nothing, you know? And she goes and climbs into his bed and decides to seduce him. Um, but then when she's trying to do that, she's trying to seduce him, um, she realizes that is not her boss. That is his brother, Gabe. Right when Gabe gets a taste of her, he does not want to let her go. I do not care for any of the characters in this book. Our heroine Elle was very snotty and thought way too highly of herself. So Elle thinks that she is better than Gabe's kind of tattooed motorcycle riding lifestyle. Gabe's internal monologue is just like gross stereotypical men stuff that I don't care for at all. I did not care for this. I just found this really annoying and didn't care for this. I was like pushing through it just to read it. Gave this two stars. <laughs> I'm really sad because I love Katie Robert, but she has definitely grown in her writing. 1000% grown in her writing. So if it's up to me, skip this book, read Katie Roberts' newer stuff. Then I read another disappointing read. We have Captured by the Monsters by R.L. Kohler and M.J. Marstons. Now I got this recommendation from Maya from Maya Read Spice. I saw one of her um, Instagram reels about it and I was like, what is that? Wanna read that now. Um, so this is a reverse harem, so R.H. A monster romance. Now, no, 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 no. I don't mesh well with reverse harems. I just don't, I don't. I think it's because I just want everybody to be together and not just everybody focus on one person for some reason. Like, I just want everyone to be together. I don't want only one person as the sole focus. I find that just to be unfair. <laughs> I don't know why my brain is just not it for that. I do love monster romances though. So I was like, let's see if this book can change my mind. I forget her heroine's name, but she lives in this like society where there's, there's like an above and a below. And the above is where all the humans live and um all human women before the age of 25 i think like 18 to 25 they are in a drawing every couple months or something to go to the below which is where all the monsters live and you will be there for the rest of your life and so our heroine gets drawn to go to the below and um these three monsters end up saving her they're these shadowy monsters and um they take their take her back to their their house they made for her and they've been waiting their whole life for their mate and she is their mate and um they get it on <laughs> and she may or may not help them save all of his, their species their alien species is kind i was loving this at first because it was very entertaining very hot at points but then it just it went downhill once the politics and the war got involved in here i was like why I want to read about monster loving. I don't want to read about conquering and taking over lands. Like, I don't. <laughs> and I don't know the reverse harem part. I thought I would like it in the beginning. It just didn't, didn't work out for me. I also didn't like how fast they like fell in love with each other. Like literally day one, the guys were like, I'm in love with you. You're my mate, blah, blah, blah. I get the whole faded mate thing, but I think for faded mates, I need a little bit more than just like right when I see you, I'm in love with you. Cause that doesn't happen a lot in Fade Mate books. I like the tension, I like the angst. I also thought the world was unexplained to the extent that I would have liked it to. There was a lot of missing stuff and things that weren't explained all that well. And there was just like some things that didn't make sense because our heroes were like, I know that the human species is scared of our alien monster race. Um, but we're very generous and gentle guys who just want to find their mate. Well then why, when a bunch of human women were put in the below, were a lot of them 
just unalived because they didn't connect with any of the triad monsters. Why? Why couldn't they just go back home if none of them were their mates? Why did they have to die? There's a bunch of killing in here, a bunch of death. I just, I loved the beginning of it. It was very entertaining, but then it just got boring with all the politics. Trigger warning in here for death, murder, non-consensual physical examinations. So please be aware of the trigger warnings. I found this very disappointing. I gave it three stars. It was okay. For what it was but um i didn't actively hate it but i didn't necessarily like it so it was an okay book at a three star then i read another big boy novella by cassie mint we have a big beast this one is about Mac matthew and chloe so matthew is a very popular chef and chloe is one of the waitresses that work in his restaurant now chloe that day got diagnosed by her doctor as vertigo for the day she just has vertigo for a little bit um and so she's very dizzy and clumsy and can't really see straight however she still needs to go to work because she needs the money this accident ends up happening with her at the restaurant that night when there is a very popular critic coming and um she may or may not end up accidentally dropping his plate onto his lap um, onto the critic's lap and Matthew gets so angry and frustrated and ends up firing her in front of all of the staff and she ends up going home and being very 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 sick. Um, he doesn't know that she's sick, he just thinks that she sabotaged the whole critic coming and everything. But he's just very confused because Matthew has been very intrigued by Chloe and thought and has been thinking for months that she's beautiful and amazing and she, he wants to get to know her more but then this whole occurrence happened and he's very confused and then he learns by his staff that chloe wasn't feeling well that night and they're wondering what happened to her and um like what happened when she went home and matthew had no idea that she wasn't feeling well and he goes to her apartment to try and help her for the day while she's not feeling well this was a fun read i gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars it's so far my least favorite out of the big boy romances and it would have been better if it weren't for the severity that Matthew put on Chloe when he fired her and then how easily she forgave him for how severe he was. Because it was just weird because at the beginning he's talking about how he really likes Chloe and he wants to get to know her more and thinks she's beautiful. He's just infatuated by her. And then he, a couple minutes later, screams at her in front of everybody and fires her. And I'm just like, if you had this compassion for somebody, like, it probably wouldn't scream and yell at them and then the heroine wouldn't forgive him that easily or else I would not have. <laughs> That's freaking sure. So yeah, I just found it to be a little bit too harsh. And then he goes and pulls like a 180 about being kind to take care of her and all that stuff. Uh, tropes in here, there's a bigger hero. There's a caretaking scene because he goes and takes care of her while she's sick. It's a foodie romance and it's on Kindle Unlimited. Yeah, I gave this book 8.5 out of five stars. Okay, the last book that we're gonna talk about today is called The Memory Book by Laura Avery. Um, so I've been trying to find more books that have a chronic illness representation in them. And by a list that I found online, I don't remember where this book was listed. This is a YA book. And I normally don't read YA books anymore unless they're um, favorite authors of mine or they have disability and chronic illness rep in them. And so I was like, ooh, okay, we're gonna pick this book up. It's about our heroine, Sammy, or young adult heroine, Sammy. Um, and she has been diagnosed with this genetic disorder that is in the woman in her family that um, is basically like, I don't remember the name for it, but it's like dementia, but for young people. She has a lot of memory loss. And so she decides to write the memory book about her entire life. So this whole book is her writing in her um, notes app on her phone or her computer just writing out what has happened to her recently this book is a three star read for me more like a 2.5 maybe even a two um i was liking this and then as i read more the more i started to dislike sammy and not her in general just like some of the things that she did just like didn't mesh well with me and just like i didn't really like a lot of the side characters the only people that i liked in this book were sammy's immediate family um, like her brothers and sisters and her parents. Her best friend at one point, I wanted to punch a wall because of how rude and inconsiderate she is. During this book, she has a really hard time, Sammy does, of telling people that she has this condition, that she has this disorder. And so she's keeping it a secret from a lot of people because she doesn't know how to tell people. She doesn't want them to view her differently. And so this whole uh, incident happens. I won't spoil it for you, but um, her best friend finds out that she has this condition now. And she gets so pissed that Sammy didn't tell her. And then she kind of ignores Sammy for a while. Like ignores her, won't pick up any of her calls, won't talk to her anymore. And Sammy just tries to reach out again. It's like, hey, like trying to talk to her again. And she's just like, can you take a hint? I don't want to talk to you. I'm going through my own crap right now and I don't need yours on top of mine. 
It's just like pissed me the heck off. And like, you can't be compassionate to your best friend, your best friend who just found out she has this rare genetic disorder. The way that she went about it, utterly, ugh, I hated it. The whole romantic aspect in here, the love aspect in here, Sammy really has this big crush on a guy who graduated two years ago from her high school, who's back visiting his parents in town for a little bit, and they might or may not start a romantic relationship. But then um, she also starts feelings for her next door neighbor, who's been her childhood best friend. And just like the whole romantic part in here just didn't flow well with me. I wish she, like, the author would have just had the relationship between one person. Like, I wish that she would have only focused on the relationship with her next door neighbor. Why did this other guy have to come into play? I don't understand. The other main part in here, this may be a little bit of a spoiler, but this book does not end in an HEA. No HEA. It pulls a The Fault in Our Stars. And it pissed me off. Pissed me off. Because I don't want to read about that. If you're chronically ill, if you have a disability or a disorder, you do not want to worry about other people dying from their disease. The only thing that is saving this book for me that the reason why it is a three star is because there is a point in here that I really related to is Sammy has to change her whole life around and change her schooling like she was going to go to she had plans to go to NYU she got into NYU she's valedictorian and because of her genetic disorder she has memory loss so she forgets where she is she forgets who she who she is at points and the memory loss part I really related to because with my chronic illness I get a lot of brain fog and memory loss um so I really related to that and then I really related to Sammy and her whole journey with having to have her whole future derailed and having um to quit school and leave school and not being able to attend to attend at all because of the disability and I really related to that because I had to do that recently and so I found that 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 to be very relatable however a lot of the other aspects in here did not work for me and were kind of triggering for me um, especially the end anyways there you have it so those are um the 15 books that I have read so far in February please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to I would love to know and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things leave me a um a bed emoji down below because we talked about wrong bed right guy and I kind of ranted about it so <laughs> anyways thank you all so so much for watching I will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all